Uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Casey Adderhold. I work at the Incorporated Research Institutions for Seismology, and I'm part of the Urge Leadership Team. And uh, we'll just be running this uh, quick one hour event, um, mainly just to uh, provide some information about uh, different conference sessions that are coming up, and as well as um, hear from some participants who've already submitted abstracts or submitted presentations and just to kind of encourage participation in these upcoming conferences. Um, so uh, a couple of notes. Um, we want to make sure that this is a respectful um, area. So make sure uh, to, to be respectful of, of the people who are participating. Um, please stay muted unless you are speaking. And um, if you have any questions, you can type those into the chat as well. Um, and to remember to always um, be speaking from your own experience um, as well in, in this um, environment, just to maintain that respectful environment. So um, at this time, I'd like to uh, go ahead and start with a um, video that was um, put together by Gabriel Duran, who cannot attend um, today. So he put his uh, message to um, you all in a video. And so I think we'd like to play that now, please. I had a theory that in order to diversify the geosciences, we need a national leadership. We need a national strategy. We need to make these issues something that the entire community can rally around under the same goal. I urge patience, open lines of communications. I urge caution and a constant pursuit of progress. Don't give up when leadership buy-in does not fix things. Don't give up when your pod members stop regularly attending meetings. Don't give up when members take the racism out of this work. Don't give up when urge doesn't fix all the problems by the end of the summer or by the end of this year. Don't stop pursuing strong, bold, anti-racist actions. My oh my, what a journey it has been these last 16 weeks. Thank you all so much for participating uh, with the Urge team. It's, it's been quite a ride. And since our launch date in mid-January, Urge has brought together close to 4,500 geoscientists across almost 300 pods in the US and abroad to join in these efforts of you know, belonging, accessibility, justice, equity, diversity, and, inclu and inclusivity uh, initiatives, or Be a Jedi. You know, we have come a very long way with our learning of anti-racism and our unlearning of structural racism in geoscience. But we are not done yet. We still have much more to go, uh, a lot of time ahead of us to accomplish what we need to accomplish. And you know, as a part of each session, urge pods drafted and developed anti-racist strategies and policies for their labs, their departments, institutions, and societies, and what we call deliverables. And the goal, you know, moving forward with these deliverables is for each pod to refine these policies within their pods and to receive buy-in and support from institutional leaders. And to achieve this, Urge has developed a multi-part program in what we call stage two refinement and stage three dissemination. However, like um, many other geoscientists this summer, we are spending a lot of our time out in the field and catching up on a lot of the lost time from COVID. And as we work hard to better our science, we are also working very hard in developing the best possible stage two of urge for you and our discipline. And so for the meantime, the start date for urge stage two refinement will begin in September. And in this stage, pods will begin to refine and improve on each deliverable. And you know, ideally this will look like pods assigning one to three members to each deliverable. And these assigned pods will focus primarily on their deliverables over the course of the three months, all the way up to stage three dissemination. And this is gonna look very differently between big pods and small pods. So if you have any questions, please refer to our frequently asked question page on the Urge website for further guidance. And to assist and facilitate refinement, Urge leaders will provide additional resources, including new readings to help participants further research their deliverables, 
uh, and we'll be providing examples of ideal policies and highlights for each deliverable that can further support BIPOC geoscientists. Meanwhile, we'll be also continuing BIPOC listening sessions so we can help network and support BIPOC leaders who are engaging in urge. Uh, as well, we will be implementing a forum and chat function on our website for pods to chat with other pods who are working on the same deliverables. And lastly, we'll be providing virtual events focused on each deliverable so pods can uh, discuss, collaborate, and improve their deliverables alongside other participants who are working on the same policies. And ultimately, the Urge team wants to maintain a structure that will hold all pods and their members, uh, and their members accountable and facilitate community building while providing enough resources to successfully refine deliverables. Uh, we believe a crowdsourced peer reviewed process for developing the best deliverables will help strengthen the geoscience community. And by the end of this time, by the end of stage two, we will be approaching GSA in Portland and AGU in New Orleans, and uh, along with other conferences and gatherings, both virtual and live. So we look to strengthen our urge community while spreading the word of the awesome work that all of us have committed to this last semester. And, you know, we just really hope you consider submitting an abstract to our urge sessions this conference season. And, and thank you so much for sticking with us and keep an eye out for urge emails with additional information for future urge events. Uh, and if, again, if you have any questions, please visit our Frequently Asked Questions page. And if you can't find what you were looking for, please email us at info.urgeoscience at gmail.com. Thank you and see you soon. All right, lovely. Um, so if there's any questions, of course, you can uh, t uh, pop those into the chat. Right now, we'll um, hear some comments, though, uh, from uh, Vashan. Vashan, can you join? Thank you. So over the last 42 days, I was at sea, and I had a lot of time to think and reflect on what happened in the last 16 weeks. I recognized how much work it was, and uh, I recognized how fast-paced everything moved. And uh, something that amazed me was that it was clear to me that so many people put so much work and effort into urge it was amazing to me that people trusted the urge team to guide uh teams pods through this process and uh, and then i also started looking at some of the surveys and some of the answers that people were saying and the thing that struck me was that there are people who wanted more time to work on some of these deliverables. What's clear is that people wanted to work hard to improve the geoscience to be proactively anti-racist. And that gives me a lot of hope. It gives me a lot of hope because it means that there is a community out there. There's a community of geoscientists who really, truly want to shift or discipline from being one of the least diverse in terms of the number of people getting PhDs uh, to becoming more diverse, to becoming more accepting, to becoming more open, to becoming proactively anti-racist. And that truly is amazing. And when I started Urge um, and started thinking about it and sent out a tweet to say, what if we all did something together? What if we all read and then I said, what if we all read a book together? What if we all did something together as a community? And one of the things that struck me about some uh, programs aimed at inc increasing diversity, equity, justice, belonging, and accessibility in uh, all of STEM fields was that I thought what was missing was social science research. I thought what was missing was more rigor and more um, learning from not just social science research, but of personal experiences and people who actually study this for a living. And that's what I set out to do. And uh, we tried to do this in the first 16 weeks and I was happy with how many people did deliverables and make them. And then, you know, we realized that there was just not enough time to do this very rigorously. And so thus stage two 
where we refine the deliverables and that's what Gabe tried to uh, um, talk about in the video and we'll be providing more information. But there, we'll be able to dig deeper. We'll be able to have more flexibility. We'll be able to uh, actually talk more about some of the things um, that uh, we tried discussing in the first 16 weeks. And uh, given that people wanted to spend more time on this, I have hope. I have hope that it would be rigorous. I have hope that it would be uh, um, crowdsourced. We have 4,500 people all coming together, working on the exact same thing. And we all can look on the website, see it and learn from each other. But I feel like that's not enough. You know, once we develop these policies, we have to enact those policies. And the first step to doing this, just like with our science, just like with our geophysics, with our geology, with our paleontology, with our oceanography, with our climate science, with our uh, planetary science, we have to communicate our results. And we have to effectively communicate our results to people who are not aware of what we done, what we did. And we do that via papers. We do that via abstracts and giving oral talks and posters. And sometimes one of the first steps to doing this is going to conferences and presenting at those conferences. And that's what we're proposing here. We're proposing at GSA and AGU to begin communicating our results to the broader audience. And so I'd like everybody to just imagine, imagine that you're at AGU and GSA and there's 4,000 people wearing an Urge t-shirt. Imagine that all 4,000 people are gonna be interacting with all sorts of people the entire day. And those people who don't know about URGE, don't know about the work that's being done, don't know anything about the program, see 4,000 people in t-shirts, URGE teachers. They're gonna have questions. They're gonna be asking, they're gonna be hungry to, hungry to know. And we're gonna get a chance to communicate with those people. We're gonna get a chance to tell them about URGE, to tell them about what we've been doing over the past year. And I think this is a fantastic opportunity to do that, to do it rigorously, to have them ask questions, to have our ideas get tested and to discuss more about what we've done. And so I imagine GSA and AGU as this community event, as the urge showing out to the rest of the community that we are here, we are strong, there's a groundswell, there's a lot of us willing to do this work and there's a lot of us who've put effort into this and I know that people are worried about leadership by it. I know that people are worried about roadblocks that could come in the way. But it's gonna be hard for those roadblocks. It's gonna be hard for leadership to ignore us if we communicate our results well, if we have a groundswell of people, if a lot of us are behind us communicating our results. And I think that's what this GSA AGU represents. And that's what opportunity exists and it's in keeping with how we do science. We do the work, we communicate it well. And URGE will provide guidance on how um, some good practices for communicating with your department. And so with that, I wanna say thank you guys. I truly have hope, but there's also work to do. And I think we can do that work. Turn it over to you, Casey. Thanks, Vishon. And so now we'll hear a little bit about the urge uh, sessions that have been proposed. Um, so starting out um, with uh, Phoebe Cohen about the GSA session. Phoebe. Thanks, Casey. Um, yeah, so GSA is coming up in Portland. The abstract deadline is Tuesday. Um, I'm sure many of you on this call are actively thinking about that as I am. Um, and so our session is T162 Lessons Learned from Urge 2021. Um, and a number of us will be there from the URGE team, and we will be uh, doing a presentation on the development of the URGE curriculum um, and talking a little bit more about <clears throat> how the URGE curriculum came into fruition. That will be, um, that will be led by Gabe. Um, and so our hope here, you know, Vashan does a great job of sort of explaining our motivation behind doing these sessions. Um, and so we're encouraging um, 
pods to submit abstracts that sort of describe their pods urge journey, whatever that might be. And the fact that there's, you know, we're really interested in hearing about the different experiences of different types of institutions um, and in, um, successes as well as challenges, I think is really critical because I think sharing challenges can be um, extremely helpful in terms of um, coming together as a community to figure out strategies for overcoming those challenges, um, especially when you're, you know, learning about how um, maybe a group of similar institution to you maybe overcame challenges. Um, we're also interested in hearing about specific policies, procedures, you know, structural changes that have already taken place. We know that a lot of this work is in progress. Um, and so we're not expecting, you know, folks to show up to GSA having completely revamped their entire curriculum. Um, and so we're also interested in hearing about uh, sort of your vision of the future for your department or your institution or whatever your pod um, represents as it relates to anti-racism. Um, and so uh, it will be like a formal GSA session, but we're really hoping to have time for, um, for conversation, for Q&A. Um, there may be a poster session if there's enough interest, which would be a really great opportunity for folks to connect more as well. I know someone in the chat asked about the um, abstract rule. Um, and we are listed, I believe we are co-sponsored as a geoscience ed, but I'm going to make a note to check on that um, because I don't actually, I haven't actually confirmed that. So I'm gonna make a note right now. Um, but yes, we will try to um, make it so that this is, you know, the urge, um, uh, an abstract submitted to the urge session would not preclude you from also submitting an abstract to a another um, scientific research session. Um, yeah, the t-shirts don't exist yet. Stay tuned, Vishan sort of, you know, uh, that, that's our vision, but we're working hard on it. Um, and, um, and those will be uh, also used to help us um, raise some funds for continuing our work. Um, and uh, you know, someone said, oh, 300 um, pods, you can see fill a day or more. Um, I mean, that's why we're doing one at GSA and AGU since uh, different parts of our community go to different meetings. Um, and so we'll just we'll just see what happens. Um, we're certainly not expecting all 300 pods to submit abstracts, although if you do, that would be amazing. And GSA would just be completely overwhelmed. Um, but we have already been marked by GSA as a session of broad interest, which is great. Um, and um, we'll be in a large a larger room. Um, so I think GSA recognizes that this session uh, could have really high impact and high interest um, and, and active audience participation. Um, name badge ribbons, that's also a good idea. We will add that to our list. All right, that's all for GSA. Oh, and also, sorry, I forgot to say, also, uh, those of you who are GSA folks probably know that there's been sort of some changes in terms of remote virtual presentations um, and a lot of things are in flux right now. Um, so my suggestion is that if you are interested in presenting um, and you're not sure if you will be able to present in person to please submit an abstract. Um, and we will do our best to work with GSA um, to make sure that you can present um, remotely. I think they're going to have a lot of um, a lot of these requests, and they're going to they're going to have to be a little bit more flexible than they have been. So so please don't let that hold you back from submitting um, an abstract because I know uh, you know the the fall is is still uncertain for many of us. Thanks. Thanks, Phoebe. Well, I won't rehash everything um, completely because Phoebe did a great job of explaining um, sort of what we're looking for in abstract submissions for GSA. And of course, that submission deadline is, is sooner than AGUs. So um, with the AGU session uh, proposed by the URGE leadership team, um, we're looking for similar things. So uh, we'd love to hear from as many pods as possible. Um, we know AGU is a huge, huge event, and so we're we're quite excited to see what gets submitted to to this session, and to see how many submissions we really can get because um, you know it's a big poster hall, and it'd be great to see um, some very loud, wonderful, eager conversations in in those um, poster rows of just rows upon rows of urge urge pods meeting together. So. 
Um, we do encourage you um, to submit your abstract for consideration um, for oral presentations as well. Uh, those, those are generally determined the number of slots that we get or the length of time that we get for, for those oral presentations is dependent on the number of abstracts you receive. So, so the more abstracts we get, the more slots we should have open and available for, for those oral presentations. Um, of course, as I mentioned, I, I, I'm actually quite excited um, for the poster session, though, because um, I think being able to see, see people again is something that's going to be great, uh, for one thing. And then also just having those conversations, you know, the kinds of conversations that have been extraordinarily difficult in, in this time of, of Zoom calls and Zoom meetings and all kinds of technical difficulties. So, um, so. With that being said, um, we're hoping for at least um, a good uh, 90 minutes or so of, of our uh, session, which was proposed as a union session. So once again, that sort of broad participation across disciplines, across fields and, and sub-disciplines. Um, and, and then we would like to see um, a very large poster session sometime throughout the day. Now, this is a hybrid meeting as well, and there have not been too many details on how that will work. I think the AGU team is working very hard to make sure that people can participate um, in the way that they uh, are comfortable participating. And so we will try to um, relay any of your concerns, um, but you will need to also contact AGU on, on sort of the, the, um, the logistical details that we, we don't have control over. So if you do have any questions though, please do get in touch with us. Um, and yes, as was brought up in the chat about the number of abstracts that were that are submitted, we did um, it, during our session proposal request that um, the abstract limit be, be modified. Um, and, and AGU did um, do that for, for all sessions, not just urge. Um, but I think also there were there was concerns about you know having um, this sort of educational freebie, you know. But if you are an educational uh, researcher, then you know that's not a freebie. You need to have that one. So um, so we're we're very cognizant of that. I think as much as we can, we'd like to um, encourage conferences to uh, continue to maintain um, the ability for people to present on on both their scientific research as well as um, these these important um, topics like um, your urge work. Um, is the urge session a topical session? That was a question from the chat. Um, I do not know what a topical session is, but it is a union is. session. Okay, it is? The, oh, sorry, for GSA, it's a topical session. Oh, for sorry. For AGU, it's a union sorry. session. Yeah. Apologies. <laughs> they have different vocab. The different meetings have different vocab, so. Mm -hmm. And what is the number? Uh, does anyone have that on offhand? <laughs> it is simply called unlearning racism in geoscience. I do don't have the number on on me. All right. Any other questions? Did any did I miss anything that came up? Okay. So um, we uh, recognize that GSA and AG are not the only sessions and conferences that people will be attending um, from urge pods. And so um, Matt, could you put up the slide, please? We're happy to have um, uh, Kenda Lynch here to talk of, and Aaron, um, sorry, what's your last name, Aaron? Regberg, Regberg. Okay, there <laughs> Regberg, sorry. Uh, we're, we're so happy to have you guys here to talk about your um, proposal, uh, session in, in development. Um, so take it away. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Ken, uh, uh, Kendall Lynch, and I am a staff scientist, or Dr. Kendall Lynch. I'm a staff scientist at the Lunar and Planetary Institute here in Houston, Texas, and I'm an astrobiologist and a geomicrobiologist. And Aaron, you want to introduce yourself real quick? <laughs> Hi, I'm Aaron Rickberg. I am also a geomicrobiologist and an astromaterials curator at the NASA Johnson Space Center. And we're gonna to talk to you a little bit today about the session in development that we are working on for the Lunar and Planetary Science Conference. And Aaron's gonna tell you a little bit more about what that conference is. Yeah, so LPSC is a 50 some odd year old conference that is jointly organized by the Johnson Space Center and USRA, which is the University Space, I can't remember the acronym. University Space Research Association, which runs the LPI, so it's 
USRA, it's the LPI and, and NASA and NASA put it, to put it around together. Thanks. Thanks, Kenda. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's a, it's a conference that's about 2,000 people or so. It happens every year in March, and it's sort of the preeminent planetary science conference. Uh, and one of the things that's really unique about it is a lot of NASA management comes to this conference to talk to the scientific community. So you've got a lot of program officers there. You've got the associate administrators for planetary science um, there to listen to members of the community and to give feedback about the direction that NASA is headed. Yeah. And we also have recently NASA put out actually an RFI on diversity and equity in NASA missions and science. And so, um, you know, even uh, before this, um, this RFI made um, what we want to do with um, um, working to hopefully develop an errors related session um, at LPSC even more significant. And the LPI, um, which does the conference management for LPS LPSC, recently just developed a idea initiative that is focused on making some, um, some improvements um, on some things that occurred in the previous meeting that um, with respect to certain um, conference, um, virtual conference interfaces and things like that. But the bottom line is, is that LPI has this new initiative to um, address diversity, equity, and inclusion. And one of the first places they're doing that is with the LPFC meeting and uh, our, our meetings programs in general. And so um, uh, there are several of us both at um, the LPI part of the USRA pod and then um, many members at NASA Johnson Space Center that were part of um, I think uh, ad hoc pod or were basically um, urge participants that participated in a pod and we all kind of got together and decided that we felt that it would be important to try to have urge representation um, at the 2022 LPSC and so we are working on that it is still in development our timeline right now is that um, we are hoping to propose this to the conference management um, before the end of the summer. Um, LPSC happens a little later, like Aaron said, it happens in March. Um, abstracts are usually due, uh, unfortunately, usually they're due the first week of January. Um, they've started to realize that the second week might be better. So hopefully that will happen, that'll get pushed back. But basically, um, you know, um, abstracts will be due in January. Uh, um, and then uh, sessions will be announced. I believe they tend to announce, announce them October, November. So that's kind of the timeline. So we're trying to, you know, um, propose an idea for a session. We're not, we're not sure what it looks like yet. There's multiple options. Um, we do have plenary sessions. We have um, the topical sessions and then we have uh, special sessions. So we're not sure what it will look like yet, but we're working in developing and, and working to propose it and create something with the, the, um, with the, um, the conference leadership. Um, so for those of you interested in urge activities at LPSC 2022, or just want to lend your support because you want to see this happen, please feel free to send me a contact email and I will put you on a mailing list to just keep you guys updated as, as um, our, our team works through de um, developing our session and proposing it with the conference management and figuring out what the final product will, will be. Great, thanks so much for both of you for, um for coming to the session today and telling us about your plans. Very exciting. Um, so at this point, we will hear from a few other folks. We've got some submitted videos and we'll play through. Um, some of these are our other sessions and some are abstracts um, for presentations that are coming up. So just a little bit of a preview. And then um, Eleanor Martin, if you want to unmute um, after that video and just give a little a um, bit more information about your um, session that you've submitted here in the chat, that'd be great. So Matt, uh, whenever you're ready with the video, thank you. Hi, I'm Holly Barnard from the University of Colorado and my co-conveners, Dr. Kwia Asawuku and Dr. Kamini Singha and I We'd like to let everyone know about an exciting session that we have planned at AGU this year. So our session is in the education session, section, um, ED27, and we are interested in interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary teams, how we build the next generation of geoscientists, and how we uh, promote um, and amplify the voices of others. So we are especially interested in submissions that discuss strate strategies to advance, amplify, and celebrate science beyond your own discipline, how we recruit, support, and promote the next generation of scientists, 
and how we build meaningful interdisciplinary collaborations. Um, also, we are especially interested in people's strategies for broadening participation beyond the identities of the dominant groups in science. So submissions presenting new thinking on how personal and professional identities are perceived and the impact on science advancement are especially encouraged as well. So we hope you will consider submitting to our session and we really look forward to seeing everyone at AGU. Hello, my name is Casey Adderhold and I work at the Incorporated Research Institutions for Seismology or IRIS. I just wanted to highlight a special interest group meeting on August 17th that we are organizing at the Gage Sage Community Science Workshop titled Progress and Justice, Equity, Diversity, Inclusion, and Access in Geoscience. We would like to hear from participants on what actions are being taken at their organizations and institutions to address the lack of diversity in the geosciences. We also would like to discuss resources that are needed or can be shared and foster potential collaborations and actions that can be facilitated across the Gage Sage, Iris UNAVCO, and Seismic Geodetic communities. Please get in touch with me at casey at iris.edu if you have any questions, and I hope to see you there. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Naj, and I would like to tell you briefly about the 2YC Urge Pod. Our pod members are listed here and consist of 11 two-year college geoscience faculty from campuses across the U.S., as well as a geoscience education associate from CERC at Carleton College. At the top of the page, you'll see our logo designed by one of our members, Christy Bradford. Our pod leader is Laura Gurton, and the title of our GSA abstract for the urge session is given here. Our pod's focus is about how faculty can support BIPOC students in the first two years of college, particularly in introductory level geoscience classrooms. We are disseminating our work in several ways. We have a poster presentation at the Earth Educators Rendezvous this week, and we also plan to submit an abstract for the AGU fall meeting. We also have an article coming out in an upcoming issue of New Directions for Community Colleges. Our deliverable is a 32 page document that can be found at either of the websites here, the bit.ly website or the NAGT website. The table of contents of our document is shown to the right. Among other things, the document includes suggestions and resources for both faculty working with students in the classroom and for faculty and administrators at the institutional level. We hope you can check out our resource. It started as an interest in DuPont and Parkersburg, West Virginia, a predominantly white community. But over the last year, I've become absolutely engrossed with topics of contamination, specifically environmental racism and ethics. Environmental racism is the disproportionate burden of environmental hazards on Black, Indigenous, and people of color. Examples have been in places you may have heard on the news, like in Flint, Michigan, but also places you probably haven't heard on the news, like in Northeastern Oklahoma and the Quapaw Tribe. These topics naturally merge with any course that discusses the intersection of society and geology, whether we're talking about hazards or resources. And these things are important to talk about as the largest employment sectors for geology graduates are environmental fields, oil and gas, and mining. And while that first one may be obvious, we need people that are educated on these issues going into every field. The goals of this work are to create a shareable teaching module, encourage others to add similar topics to their courses, and long-term create a standalone course on environmental racism and ethics. Hello from the GSA staff urge pod. Seven members of the GSA staff got together to create an urge pod that represents multiple departments within GSA. Our pod is somewhat unique in that it's composed of staff members at a professional society as such, our goals are centered around being a resource for GSA staff, empowering staff to make DEI a central part of their work, and providing recommendations to GSA's executive director about how staff can take concrete actions to support GSA's overall DEI goals. Some of our key activities so far are providing input regarding a new head of diversity role that GSA will hire in the near future, and creating a set of recommended actions GSA staff can take to help GSA fulfill the recommendations 
outlined in the report recently issued by GSA's Diversity Working Group, which represents the voice of GSA members. Many thanks to the urge leadership and all the pods who are helping to make the geosciences more inclusive. We'll see you at GSA 2021. All right, so that's the end of that video. Like you can see it's a little bit recursive. We're hearing from the GSA pod about GSA abstract and everything. So everybody's involved in this. It's been a great team effort. Um, I'd like to um, invite Eleanor Martin uh, briefly to talk about um, another opportunity uh, for submitting abstracts. Yeah, thank you. Um, the annual American Meteorological Society meeting is held in Houston in January um, 2022. The abstract deadline is the beginning of August, and they have as part of that meeting their third symposium on diversity, equity, and inclusion. So if there are urge pods in the more meteorology and atmospheric science arena, then it would be great to see some abstracts submitted to that and to have some connections and discussions at that meeting as well. So it's not my symposium, but um, I can put you in contact with people if you're interested. Thank you. Thank you, Eleanor. All right, and I will address a question that just came up. Thank you for the reminder, Aaron. Um, is there a um, urge session proposal submitted for the Ocean Sciences meeting in 2022? And as far as I know, um, I'm not in this community, but as far as I know, there wasn't an urge session specifically, but there are people who are interested um, and have already expressed interest um, to, to the urge leadership to have such a session and that there are opportunities still, even though the session proposal deadline has passed for, for that ocean sciences meeting, um, there are workshop proposals that um, can still be made. And so if you do have um, interest in the ocean sciences meeting, um, we can go ahead and, and get people connected uh, to work together on that. Are there any other questions? Or is there anyone who wanted to briefly plug anything else coming up? Seeing none, but if there are any that come up while we are waiting. Here, I think we will just go ahead and um, since we've got some folks here and we don't get a lot of time to, to talk to each other, especially when we were in the webinar mode before, um, let's just go ahead and use this as an opportunity to break out into groups of about eight. And um, you can use this remaining time. We'll, we'll do, um, uh, what, 15 minutes? And um, just introduce yourselves. Uh, mention whether or not you've planned to uh, submit or um, run any sessions uh, in the upcoming year and uh, just go ahead and, and meet each other and then we'll come back here um, with uh, five minutes to the hour. <laughs> I think everyone's back now. Um, well, I hope that was fun. I certainly had fun in our session. Um, I'll address one quick question that was asked as if um, Urge will have a booth at AGU and um, we have been offered one. We haven't fully figured that out yet. So we will get back to you about that. Um, but luckily we have a few months yet to figure that one out. Um, so at this time, uh, I think we'll just go ahead and ask if there's any final burning questions before we conclude. If there's any comments from the sessions that someone that everyone wants to share more broadly. Um, there was probably a lot of good discussion. I know there was in ours. I'll, I'll just go quickly First, on that note, um, you know, we were talking strategies of trying to like, what, what do we do with these sessions that generally attract the same people, the people who don't really need to be our audience, right, will be presenting and attending these sessions. So how do we bring in more people? How are we bringing in the people that we really need in the room to invoke that change? Um, and so if there's um, strategies along those lines, one of them is, is to, um, you know, center this work into the middle of your conference session, make sure, you know, you, you try to put it into the main program where everyone is attending, you know, put it in the main room, not just a, a special session or a breakout room. 
Um, so as much as we can do that and point to other places where that precedent has set been set, such as the AGU union session, um, the, the easier that will be at, at sessions in the future. So Eleanor Snow, do you wanna unmute briefly and just mention the point you just brought up? Sure, well, we were all just talking about how um, demographic data is someplace, some places are not allowed to even ask those questions. In federal government, we have a hard time with that. In Canada, they have a hard time with that. And then also there's a reluctance to answer those questions. And so um, what are people doing? What are the best practices for measuring progress in diversity when you can't get the fundamental demographic data that would tell you about mm. that? Uh, we were all sort of scratching our heads saying, we could use a little more discussion about that. Yeah, that's a great point. These are definitely things that come up of like, okay, you know, progress, have you made it? And wait, how can we even measure it? These are all good questions. And, and we hope that in these presentations, in this work, we continue to um, sort of feed in all the, all the best ideas on that. And so we don't have to keep talking in circles. We can actually um, find the best way forward and, and disseminate that across, across everywhere. everywhere. Um, I did see in the chat there's from Eleanor Martin um, um, asking about uh, advice and guidance about working with state leadership. Um, so in our breakout session, we were talking a bit about federal agencies uh, with um, uh, both USGS and NASA and NOAA. And um, I know that's not state, but there are some, I think, some similarities in the approach that can, can start working on that. And so um, I agree, yes, advice and guidance would be helpful on that. And so we can try to put you in touch with other groups that are, are um, working in similar environments uh, with state, state leadership. Don't currently have those best practices or guidance yet, but I assume at least putting you guys in touch with each other will help. Any other questions? I see a comment from Aaron. Please do not be intimidated by the length of the LPSC abstracts, two to seven pages. Oh my God. It is totally okay to submit shorter AGU GSA style abstracts. Thank you for making that point. I was unfamiliar <laughs> with their style. Yeah, they're, they, they tend to be mini. Uh, a lot of times people, like it's the first draft of their paper is like an LPSC abstract so they can, they can be dense, but you can keep them one page short, or you can have fun and go to town because you got lots of space. So it's, it's kind of up to, you know, how far you want to go. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Any last comments, questions? Want to be respectful of your time? So, well, thank you everyone for showing up today. Um, this was recorded, not the breakout sessions, just the main part. So that will be available to everyone to see later on. Um, thank you so much for sharing the resources uh, where we can. We'll add links to our page. And um, yeah, looking forward to seeing you guys at sessions. Thank you.